welcome back to Mad Medicine. I've gotten a lot of requests from you guys to talk about what types of applicants medical schools look for when it comes to accepting uh, pre-meds. So without further ado, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now before I get started, I want you guys to hit that subscribe button if you guys like our videos. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this specific video, hit that like button. And please, if you have anything you want me to talk about, any questions you guys may have, or any topics you may want me to cover, please leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Now that I've done my uh, selfless uh, uh, self-advertising, shameless self-advertising, um, let's dive deep into the question. And the question that you guys have been asking me is, what do medical schools look for in applicants? And that answer is that medical schools want a very well-rounded applicant. Now, I know what I'm saying sounds like a load of bull and I probably thought that at one point. Uh, actually, I know I thought that at one point because I've heard this being told to me an undergrad so many times so many times someone told me they want a well-rounded applicant and i was like what the hell does that mean okay i didn't believe them. i was like some bs but the truth is that's actually what they do want so we're gonna break it down for you guys today um, a well-rounded applicant um isn't talking about physique okay we're we're actually talking about what types of things you've done in your undergrad career to make you a good medical student so let's talk about the basic stuff, right? So basically, medical schools wanna see that you have a strong GPA. And the reason why they wanna see that you have a strong GPA is because they wanna know, can you keep up with the rigors of medical school, right? Like undergrad is hard, I, I can definitely say that, especially if you're pre-med, there's a lot of stuff that goes into being a pre-med. You have to take so many sciences and some really hard classes, but that's nothing compared to what medical school is like, to be honest with you. Now, don't be afraid, right? If you guys are in pre-med and you may be thinking, wow, I'm barely keeping up with this stuff. How am I gonna keep up with med school? That's, don't worry, you'll be fine because you'll adjust. You adjusted from high school to college and then from college you'll adjust to medical school. Now, what medical schools really wanna see is, are you willing to put in the work? And that's kind of reflected by your grades as an undergrad. They wanna see, do you have good, to, you know, decent to good grades? Because if you do, then that reflects that as a medical student, you're gonna be able to not only keep up with the rigor of medical school, because it's not just grades, but you're also gonna be able to understand the concepts you're learning because you have a strong prior foundation. And the same goes for the MCAT, right? The MCAT kind of tests your knowledge on your prior foundation. And if you do well in the MCAT and you have good grades, then they know, medical schools know that you're academically sound, you know what you're gonna be doing and you know how to you know, study in some sense. Because keep in mind, medical school, the way you're gonna study in med school is gonna be completely different than the way you're studying in undergrad for the most part. Um, so that's the first thing, right? That goes down into being a really good applicant. Number two is having some clinical experience, right? Now you can be really, really smart as an undergrad. You could have a four freaking point oh, and you could be a genius and have no clinical experience. Well, how are medical schools supposed to assess that you're a good applicant? You could think, oh, I wanna go to med school, I wanna do medicine without having any experience. That makes no sense because to be honest with you, the reality is, the idea of medicine is different than the reality of medicine. So you wanna have some clinical experience to show to medical schools that, yes, I know what I'm talking about, I know why I wanna be a physician because I've done A, B, C, and D, and I know that being a physician is right for me. And that's a, that's a phrase I just coined on the spot. Um, so that's the first, that's the second thing, sorry. You wanna make sure you have some sort of clinical experience to show to the admissions committee, to any medical school, that you know you wanna be a physician. You are, your heart is set on being a physician. Um, also, you wanna have some clinical experience because a lot of times it helps out in medical school. And I wanna give an example of one of my friends who had really good clinical experience with talking to patients. And because he had really good uh, clinical experience talking to patients, a lot of the stuff that you learn in medical school, he had already learned early on. So for example, how to break kind of bad news to patients, how to tell patients they're gonna be on certain drugs they probably don't wanna be on. He'd already worked you know, in a medical office kind of doing that, so he already had that uh, skill set built in when he went into medical school. And that was from his clinical experience, right? That had nothing to do with his grades or his academics at all. That just had to do with his clinical experience. So that is why clinical experience is pretty important. Um, now I'll go deeper into it. Now let's shut up. I'll go deeper into it later in a different video. But as for uh, clinical experience, that's kind of a must, I would say. Number two, uh, number three, 
um, is going to be research. Now, research is a very variable uh, topic, a very variable subject. You don't need to have research to get into medical school. It will help you if you have research, and it won't hurt you if you don't have research. But is it necessary? I would argue maybe because in some schools you gotta have research and that's that's the truth that's the honest truth some schools you they require research whether they say it explicitly or not it's kind of a requirement and other schools don't weigh research that heavy because their emphasis as a medical school is on other things so maybe they might be emphasizing um, uh, public health more than they are research that doesn't make the medical school a lesser medical school it just means that their priorities are different based off the needs of the communities that they're located in um, so that being said research is number three so you if you have research that's good if you don't have research experience that's not bad it's just not as good as having research experience okay and then uh, number four I think the last one would be stuff like uh, leadership experience or a job experience stuff like that this is what I put as an as an extra category um, these are things you can have but you don't need to have right if you have it that's good that's great but if you don't have it that's okay too it's kind of like research but a little bit more towards if, it, if you don't have it that's okay um, again a lot of schools will need it a lot of schools will require it you know unwritten but that's the main fact so if you have all of these aspects if you have the grades if you have a good MCAT score if you have solid clinical experience, right? It's clinical experience that says, I know I want to be a physician, not I know I want to be in medicine. Um, if you have solid clinical experience, if you have a good research experience, and if you have some leadership experience or some extracurricular activities that you've been doing, that actually makes you a well-rounded applicant. Now, I want to talk about why being a well-rounded applicant is really important, okay? And this pretty much goes into the crux of why, as undergrads, we always think being a well-rounded applicant is some BS medical students are just saying to us to make us do a lot of work. Um, and but that's actually not the case. So the reason why they want you to be a well-rounded applicant at the end of the day is because medicine takes a lot from you. Uh, it takes a lot from you physically, it takes a lot from you uh, mentally, and socially right so physically you you're probably gonna be up late night studying you're probably gonna be up a lot of the time working in the hospital or you're probably gonna be going to a clinic or XYZ a lot of stuff is happening for you physically right and they want to make sure you have the, the rigor you have the physical rigor you're kind of kind of desensitized and you know uh, I wonder what word do I want to use? They want to make sure that you're used to the, the rigors of, of hardcore studying and hardcore work because that's kind of what it is. So as an undergrad, you're going to build up those foundations. You're going to build up, you're going to develop that, 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 that framework, okay? And you're going to improve on it in medical school. So that's why they want to make sure you have that portion um, in your physical life, right? In your physical mentality. Now, in your mental state, you've got to be strong. Right? If you're a well-rounded applicant, you haven't just been doing one thing for your whole time. You actually have been doing multiple things, kind of, it's a lot of stuff. And that kind of keeps you mentally sane. Because if any of you guys have studied for like 12, 15 hours straight, you know you start to lose your mind eventually, right? And to combat that, you have to do other things. And that's no different in medical school. If you study all the time and don't do anything else, you're gonna lose your mind. So that's why they want to make sure you're well-rounded so that you know how to control yourself, how to take care of your mental health, right? And trust me, I know a lot of people who struggle through medical school just because it's so much on them mentally that they have to step back and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But it definitely helps if you already have something stable, something to work off of in undergrad when it comes to your mental state. And then finally, educational-wise, uh, medical schools require a lot from you there so if you can manage the rest of the stuff that you're doing um, and so keep up with your grades that's great and that kind of has to go with social life right you're gonna have to sacrifice a lot and as an undergrad you probably start to understand that medicine requires sacrifice sometimes you can't hang out with your friends sometimes you can't go to those parties or you know go to those family events that you want to go to because you just got to hunker down and study and that really doesn't change in medical school, to be honest with you. Like, you could talk to my wife and ask her, how many times have I said, listen, I can't do this right now, I have to study. And she'll tell you more often than not, that's kind of my response at times. Uh, and it sucks, right? It really does suck because you're putting in a lot of work and you have to. But at the end of the day, you have to decide if the payoff is worth for you. Besides the point, that's kind of what being a well-rounded applicant um, means and why it's kind of important. 
Medicine takes a lot out of us, right? And that's not at all an exaggeration. Talk to any physician, they'll say the same thing. But if you are a well-rounded applicant and if you understand what that really means and you try to apply yourself to be a well-rounded applicant, then I promise you, you're gonna have no problem getting into med school. Now, keep in mind, being well-rounded doesn't mean you have to do all those things. Uh, a final example I wanna give, one of my good friends, one of my friends was a uh, pianist, right? He used to play the piano and he used to actually go to concerts and play and he was pretty good at it um, to the point where I think he actually won some national recognition for being a pianist. He actually had no research experience, he had clinical experience, I can say to that. He had no research experience and I think he didn't have any leadership but he had no, uh, or any job experience, but he had the experience of uh, being a pianist, okay? Like practicing and actually going and playing the piano in front of large crowds. And that actually made a huge difference because when the time came, he told me that a lot of medical schools asked him about that specific experience and how he applied that to medical school, right? Um, so my point is you don't have to do the, you know, the blueprint. You can change it up. You can be a well-rounded applicant and still do other things. It just means how are you going to frame it to show a medical school that yes, you have the medical background, you have the mental background, you know the education, right? You're a smart candidate. You have the clinical experience, but you also have the well-rounded aspect of being an applicant. Now, if you have all those things, I promise you, you're going to get in and you guys aren't going to have any issues uh, getting into med school. That being said, I hope that answers the question, what do medical schools look for in applicants? Uh, if I didn't do enough justice to it, I'll make another video, I'll explain all these things more. And in fact, I'm probably gonna talk about the MCAT, about the grades, I'm probably gonna talk about clinical experiences. Actually, I have talked about clinical experiences, so hit one of the, the things that's popping up to go watch my, my video on clinical experiences. Um, research, leadership, etc., etc. So I'm gonna make more videos about those for you guys to understand um, and pretty much answer some of the frequently asked questions that you guys have for medical students. Now that being said, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video today. Uh, we'll be back soon. If you guys, again, like this video, if you guys like the channel, if you guys like what I'm doing, please hit that subscribe button. If you guys like the video, hit that like button down there. And if you guys have anything you want me to talk about, any questions you may have that you want me to discuss, please leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. That being said, I'll see you guys soon and have a wonderful day. Thank you guys.